so as you saw that was pretty intense uh, it was raining a lot on the way home and I pretty much came home looking like I'd taken a shower so I tried putting my hair up in this man bun ish type style which I know it doesn't look that great right now, like everything's just hanging out a little bit. Anyway, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna try to turn my iPad, my iPad Air from 2020, the, I think it's the Gen 4, essentially the iPad Pro, but it's an iPad, it's the light version. I'm gonna try to turn that into a, an actual laptop for developing. So I'm gonna see like, right now I have some questions about what, do you need on an iPad for it to turn into a, an actual laptop that you can use? I know that there's certain things that I'm like, I don't have on the lap, on the iPad that kind of makes it feel like I can't really use it as a laptop. So I'm going to try to look into what those things are, what the apps are that I'll need to use, what apps I can use for like text editing, for programming, and just see if I can potentially turn this into an actual workstation or like a laptop or second laptop that I can take with me if I don't want to bring a proper laptop. So first of all, we're just going to research. I want to see like if there are any text editors that are any good on the on the iPad Air. And uh, so that's kind of the main thing that I want to check out. And then we'll go through and try to list out the things that I my use case essentially and then try to find apps for those sort of things and try to find the solutions for that on the iPad. And I'm pretty hopeful. I think that a lot of people are saying that they're turning the iPad into a laptop. So I think that this can be done. So I'm gonna try it. All right, so I've done a little bit of research now and my conclusion is that one of the main like negatives of programming on an iPad is gonna be just basically like task switching and essentially any time that you're gonna to have to use the mouse or touch the screen, that's gonna be something that you don't really wanna do. And for that, I just like felt like, okay, well, Vim it would be probably ideal for this because with Vim, you're basically just using the keyboard. So I'm downloading, I didn't even know that Vim was some was a thing for uh, for iPads or for as like an app, but apparently it is. So I'm downloading it now and I'm gonna try it out. I have an Apple Magic keyboard here. So I'm gonna try it out with the Apple Magic keyboard and see how it works with, because of the fact that you don't need to really use a mouse, I think that's gonna be the main benefit and that's gonna be something that you kinda of wanna look for in a text editor. Although I know that Vim is kinda of like high barrier to entry for most people, so I know that a lot of people won't really wanna use Vim as their text editor, but I think this can be like a hack almost for iPads because Vim is something that's super lightweight and really fast and really like, it's a really powerful tool but it's also something where you basically, your only input is gonna be through the keyboard. So there's no like bottleneck in terms of using an iPad versus using a laptop in that sense. So this could potentially be a life hack or whatever you wanna call it for iPads or programming on iPads. And speaking of life hacks, this video is sponsored by Kite. Kite is a free auto completion engine that uses machine learning to provide the completions which is what makes it stand out and also what makes it the best auto completion engine that I've used. One of the most useful features is that Kite's completions are sorted or ranked by relevance instead of by popularity or by the alphabet. This is possible because they're using machine learning to provide the completions. It means that you will get suggested completions based on the code that you're actually writing. And if you're writing code in Python, the Copilot feature offers documentation lookup so you don't have to constantly Google search function signatures and call patterns. With Kite, you can actually write code up to 18% faster. And who doesn't want to write code faster, right? So I highly recommend that you download Kite and try it out. It's completely free and supports up to 13 programming languages and 16 IDEs. So just give it a go. I know that you will like it because I love it.
So this actually got me pretty excited because this works a lot better than, or like, well, not better than I expected because I, like, how can you expect it not to work really? But it works really well to like type with the keyboard on the, on the, on the iPad. And the only thing now that I'm kind of wondering is how do I actually run code? So is there a way to run code? I'm not sure, like I'm not the best Vim user, so I'm not that great at actually using Vim. So I think that a really like a, an efficient Vim user would be really like, they would have no problem at all working on Vim in the, on the iPad. Now what I want to test is kind of how, how do I run something? Can I run something on, on the iPad? And if I can do that, I don't think there's much like many limitations to using an iPad for programming. This to me looks really good. And what you can do is you can also do this. So you can swipe up here and then you can open up a browser window next to it. So you could have this where you write your code. So you tap here, write some code. And then you could also have a browser window looking up different or stack overflow like answers and stuff. So to me, it seems like this can definitely work. And like I said, the only thing I need to figure out now is how do I run code? So I need to figure out if I can run code on Vim. That's the first thing that I need to figure out because if you can do that, then you can probably or like definitely run it on the iPad. If not, I need to figure out a way to like use a terminal or some sort of, uh, yeah, terminal type interface on the iPad. So that's what we're gonna figure out. All right, so I don't know if it's possible to even explain like how excited I am about this, which is super stupid, but I, I'm so excited. Like I'm running Alpine Linux on this laptop using the ISH, uh, which is like something that you can find. I'll leave links to everything that I've used for this in the, in the description in case you want to check it out. But you can also see kind of the, the comments that I needed to write to actually be able to, because once I started running this, I wasn't able to use the package manager for the Alpine Linux. So first I had to like get that and then install it. And now I can basically install things. So I've just installed Vim and Python. So now the test is going to be to write a simple like print uh, Python script where it's just going to print hello world and uh, then run that on this ISH or iShell or whatever they call it. I don't really care what they call it. I'm just super happy that this works. And yeah, so let's try it. So now, as you can see here, we've created a JSON file that contains a username and a password. And the password is blank right now, and the username is blank. So now we can just quit this, and then we can check out the Python script, test file.py. And here, I've created a little script that adds a user, or adds a username and a password to this JSON file. So we add cal and then password one, two, three, and then we save that to the JSON file. So now the test for this iPad is to run the script and hopefully it will work. 
So let's see. Quit. And then Python test file.py. Okay, nothing happened. Usually good. Now do vim user.json. And as you can see, we've added a user named Cal with a password that is password123. Right now it seems like it's working and you can do most things like there's a lot of uh, this kind of gives me a lot of ideas for future videos to make on this topic but I spent a little bit of time trying to get a web driver to work so basically trying to see if I can make selenium work on this uh, which I think will be very difficult to actually achieve because like you need web drivers and you need lots of different things that I think is not necessarily available on the iPad, but that's something that potentially I could look into like doing, instead of doing this, which is like, it's kind of running a virtual environment on the iPad, but I don't think it's quite running it. It doesn't have all the packages and you can't do all the things that you could do on an actual uh, virtual machine. So that's something that you could probably do, find apps for virtual machines and see if you can figure something out with that. But this is a really good first step and this means that there's potential for certain Python automations that could be done via the iPad, which I think would be really interesting to see kind of how that works. Because right now what I've done is I've also, I'll show you actually. So right now what I'm doing is I have this like little web browser window up here and what you can do is, or what I've been doing is I'm like, I type in whatever it is I'm going to search for and then I can have this up here and scroll through it and kind of look through different things while still being on this page and being able to actually type things out in uh, the Linux environment. So that means that I can still check uh, for different information here and then just type it in straight away. So it's kind of, it does allow for some multitasking in this regard. And you can do this as well, where you have like half the screen and then you can decide how much you want to show for each. And then, so then you can basically just switch between the two uh, by doing this. So once you've typed something out here and then you run into an error, you can basically just go to Google and start to find whatever answer you, you're looking for. And then once you're done with the answer, or maybe you want to see or read something, then you can have it up as like a smaller window and then have this as like the main one. And the ability to use Vim and to use Python and to run Python code in this environment is really something that allows for a lot of potential for doing different things. So let me know what you think, but I might actually make a video where I try to do, try to come up with a Python automation and do it on the iPad only. Uh, I actually have some ideas for an automation that I think would be really good. So uh, let me know if you want to see that and uh, maybe I'll do it. I don't know what this video will turn out like, but the idea was just to see if I could make this into a developer kind of workstation and what would be required. And with this, I think that it's definitely possible, but I need to get some more information, like work with it a little bit more to see what I think of it. But anyway, this is like a first impressions of how this is done. I thought it was super interesting that you could run Linux. So I'm really happy with that. But anyway, let me know what you think. Let me know if there's any questions about this sort of stuff that you want me to look into. And I can definitely do that. This was just one of the first steps, I think, to turning the iPad into an actual laptop and a working programming machine, essentially. Either of you, that's it with this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.